In today's video, I want to show you how to use the popular VLOOKUP function in Excel 2016. Uh, by the way, I'm recording this in Excel 2016, but it'll also work in Excel 2013 and Excel 2010 and Excel 2007 the exact same way. So I'm going to show you two different VLOOKUPs today. Now, uh, in the first one here, we have uh, two different sheets. Notice how sheet one has a list of all the customers and the customer ID is in the first column as we can see. Now I'm going to go to sheet two and notice how sheet two has the orders that the customers uh, placed. Uh, here we have the customer ID, but I'd like to show the company name from that customer right here in this sheet as well. So what we really have to do is take that customer ID from column B, look it up on sheet one and find the appropriate customer ID and from there return the customer name. That is a perfect use of the VLOOKUP. So first of all, I want to add a new column here. I want to right click on column C and we'll pick on insert. Now, uh, right up here, I'll just type in company name. That's for the uh, column header. Now at this point, I'm going to start the VLOOKUP formula. So uh, I'm going to type in the equal sign, like all formulas, right? Now I'm going to pick on the FX. Now you can type in the formula or you can use the, uh, the function builder. Either way is fine. So I'll pick on the FX. Now um, the VLOOKUP can either be found by typing in VLOOKUP up here or it's also under the lookup uh, and reference category. So I'll pick up lookup and reference. And then if we scroll down, we find one that's called VLOOKUP. It's called VLOOKUP, by the way, because the, the lookup table is going to be vertical. It's running down the screen, whereas um, sometimes the table is running across the screen and then we would use an H lookup. However, the um, maybe we could do another video about the H lookup. So the VLOOKUP is going to have four different parameters. The lookup value is what you're trying to look up. So in this case, what I'm trying to look up is the customer ID right there in cell B2. Now the table array is, uh, I'm going to call that the lookup table. That's where you're trying to look it up at. So that could be on the same sheet or in our case, it's on a different sheet. So I'm going to pick where it says table array and then I'll pick on sheet one at the bottom. So I'm going to highlight from A2 all the way over to E, let's say E94. This can go very, very far down, E92 in this case. So Let's talk about this uh, lookup table. It could be on the same sheet as the other information. It could be on uh, a different sheet like it is now. It could have many, many columns across and many, many rows down. Now, the most important part about the table is the first column. The first column is what has to match. So I was trying to match the customer ID. So you can see how the first column has customer IDs. If you're trying to match PO numbers, the fir then the first column of your table will have PO numbers. So that first column is really important. And uh, so here you can see that the table array is going to be on the sheet one, uh, A2 through E92. Now, the column index number is one that people get confused with. So what you do is on the table, you count from the left. So in the table, this would be column one, column two, three, four, and five. All right, so you count from the left on the first column, one, two, three, four, and five. I want the company name right here, which is the second column, right? One, two. So for that reason, I'll type the number two there. So that really means when I find the appropriate row, I want the second column, which is going to be the company name. Now you see where it says range lookup. Let's see, see what it says down here. Range lookup is a logical value. That means it's going to be either true or false. To find the closest match in the first column, then you put true there. Or if you omit it, then it's the same thing as being true. Or to find an exact match, we'll type in false. Now for this one, I'll type in false. Quite frankly, probably like 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10 times you're going to make this false because you want an exact match. Uh, in, a, in a little while, on the same video, I'll show you one where it says true there, where it doesn't have to be an exact match. But I would say most of the time, you'll put the word false there. So the lookup value is what I'm trying to look up, B2, which in this case is the customer ID. The table array is where the lookup table is. In this case, is on sheet one, 
uh, A2 through E92, the most important part about the table is the first column. That's what has to match. The column index number means, let's go back there for a second, uh, counting from the left. So this would be column one, this would be column two. If I wanted something from this column, that would be number three, right? So in this case, I have column index number two, which means the second column right there. And the range lookup says false, which means we're gonna do an exact match. So I'll click on OK. Now let's see what it gives us. So look at the formula up here. It's a, uh, or I could even double click on that cell to show you the formula. Equals VLOOKUP, open parentheses. Of course, the parts of the formula are always separated by a comma. B2, comma, sheet one, exclamation point, A2 through E92, that's the lookup table comma two, that's the column index number, uh, means the second column, comma false, which means we want to do an exact match. So when I hit the enter key there, so I want to make that bigger so we can see the full name there. So it says VIN ET is the customer ID and it gave us this company name. Now let's see if that's correct. I'm going to go back to sheet one and uh, th these are in alphabetical order. So I'm going to scroll down there's VIN ET, and you can see the other sheet has the appropriate company name based on that customer ID. So it looked like it worked. Now, we're going to copy that all the way down. Now, here's something very, very important to know. Uh, when we copy this down, we want to make sure that the second parameter here is one of those absolute references. So, in other words, the table is always going to change. So let me show you if I don't use the dollar signs in that formula. So right now it says A2 through E92 on the other sheet, right? So I'm gonna co just copy down the one cell and let's take a look at the second one. The second one says A3 through E93. And then if I even copy it down to the third one, now it says A4 through E94. So it's getting further and further away from where the actual table is and pretty soon, it would be uh, it would make that so the formula doesn't work right. So before we copy that down, we're going to put the dollar signs in the formula, which makes it one of those absolute references. So I'm going to click on um, between the A2 part of that formula. Now, a really quick way to add the uh, dollar signs is the F4 function key. And see how to put the dollar signs there. And I'll pick on the E292 uh, part, and I'll hit the F4 there. Good. So the dollar signs make it what we call an absolute reference, which means when we copy it down, that part of the formula will still stay uh, consistent. So now let's go get, uh, let me get the uh, black cross and I'll double click and we'll double click again. They'll go all the way down. There you go. So now notice how each one of them, no matter how far I go down, they all say A2 through E92 there because of the dollar signs. We call that an absolute reference. The first part of the formula is relative. The next one says B4 right there, and then B5. So those are changing for each cell, and that's what I want to happen. However, the second part of the formula is staying consistent, A2 through E92. They all say that because of the dollar signs, we call that an absolute reference. When the formula doesn't change from, I mean, when the for formula does change from cell to cell, like the uh, B3 is gonna go to B4 and then B5, that's called a relative reference. When it doesn't change, we call that an absolute reference. So take a look at the VLOOKUP formula. The B2 is the cell that you're trying to look up, which is right here. The uh, sheet one, A2 through E92 is a lookup table. I probably almost always make that absolute in your formulas. The number two means I want to get the second column of information, which is the, um, which is the company name. And the word false means we want to do an exact match. Let me show what that means. Now I'm going to change this to say VVVVV. And I know there's not one that says that. So it says NA. NA means not available or not found because we're looking for an exact match because of the word false there. It didn't find an exact match. So it says NA. I want to return that back to its original value. There you go. All right, now let's even do another view lookup like that. So I'll insert a new column. Now this time I'll let like to get the comp, uh, company name, the contact name from that other sheet. The form is going to be almost very similar. So um, I'll say equals, and we'll go back to the FX. 
Now, because I just used that, then uh, here's the lookup in reference category. And we'll go back to VLOOKUP. All right, the lookup value is still B2. The table array is still going to be the other sheet. Um, in this case, we're going to go uh, A1 through uh, E94, or E92, I think it was. Now, I know that's going to be an absolute reference, so I'm just going to hit the F4 function key right now on my keyboard, F4, and notice how that put the dollar signs in there for me, so I know that was going to be necessary. Now, in this case, let's go back to that table for a second. Uh, you're going to count from the left to get the column index number. This is column 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to type the number 3 there. And for the range lookup, I'll type in false. So very similar to the other formula, except now it says column index 3. Otherwise, it was very much the same. I'm going to click on OK. Now I have the contact name based on that customer ID. And I'll copy it right on down. And now I have the contact names for all of them. Notice how the VLOOKUP is almost exactly the same, except the column index number now says the number 3.